trample upon yourself. What happens when those values begin to be used by politicians in their march to personal success? That's what happened to uh, uh, Augustus Caesar, who killed 300 senators to become a totalitarian dictator. That's what happened to uh, Stalin, who killed men who were perhaps better than him, fellow communists, because of whom he came to power and he got them all arrested, killed them all, so that he might have exclusive power. He, is he a hero? He was a hero in Russia. Why? Because he succeeded in trampling upon everyone. That's the secular idea of heroism. Christianity created a unique kind of heroism that it's only in Australia that you can find a young woman of 18 or 20 years old. I was just reading today about two English girls, 18 years old, who went, left England, went to Zanzibar to teach English as a second language for, for a month. And uh, towards the end of their stay, two young men came on a moped, threw a can of acid uh, on them, burned them. Where do you find young women who know that they might be raped, they might be killed, they might be kidnapped, but they want to go and serve the underprivileged people? This is the heroism of the cross, which is a unique creation, a unique part of Western civilization. But the amazing fact is that as Christianity globalized these ideas, it was not intellectual colonization of the world, but it was setting people free as nations. As we were coming here, we were talking about Indonesia, uh, how Indonesia became a nation. There was no concept of a nation in those hundreds of islands. It was a result of the policies of Abraham Kuyper when he, he, after he became the Prime Minister of Holland that very systematically through Dutch Christian biblical education, that the idea of nation developed in Indonesia. The same is true of India. I've written three books on the subject, that it is the Bible that made India a nation. It's the Bible that made India a free nation. India's freedom has nothing to do with Mahatma Gandhi. He has a small role in uh, India's freedom but not in creating India as a nation, uh, sorry, not freedom, independence. He has a small role in India's independence, but independence is not freedom. North Korea is independent, it's not free. Freedom is a peculiar concept of the Bible, which we don't have the time to uh, look at right now, but it is something that I've discussed in several of my books, how India became free and how it became a nation and how it became independent. How did Australia become a nation? If the people had lived here for 40,000 years, why didn't they become a nation? Why did six, six states become one nation? Why didn't they become six kingdoms? Why did America, which was 13 colonies, become 13 kingdoms after the American Revolution? Nation is a peculiar con biblical concept which begins in Genesis 10 and 11. It's not an atheistic concept. Atheism is destroying the concept of nation today in EU. Nation is a dirty word in England. In British universities, nationalism is a dirty word in all of European countries. Because if EU has to succeed, you have to destroy nation and national nationalism. Nation is a peculiarly Protestant idea which comes from Jewish Bible, Genesis 10, 11, and 12. God creates nations. And he then says to Abraham, you come and follow me, and I will make you a great nation. And through you, I will make all the nations of the world great. I will bless them. I will heal them. I will bring justice to them. I will bring righteousness and hope to them. That's why today in Europe, the weak nations are Greece and Italy and Spain and uh, Portugal and Cyprus, these nations which do not have a Protestant heritage, they are the weak nations. The strong nations are Switzerland and Germany and England and Holland and Denmark. These are nations whose cultural roots go into the Bible because it was a peculiarly biblical idea. You begin to see that in a recent movie like James Bond, Skyfall. 
where uh, England is falling apart and even Bond now has to turn to the Reformation and say to the mother, representing Mother Queen, go into the chapel, but go to the chapel through the Reformation Tunnel. That's where evil will be defeated. Uh, I have on YouTube in my uh, summary of an exposition of uh, a review of that film, so I won't go more into it, but it's very interesting to see that as England begins to gr see that the uh, most dangerous enemies of England today are being trained in British universities. They're not being trained in Pakistan and Yemen and Saudi Arabia. People who are destroying England are being trained in England. And England cannot be saved unless it returns to its old values that made it a great nation. And the same is true of Australia. So I suppose my time is up. I had intended to focus on at least one of these 16 points uh, but let me stop here, and perhaps we can pick up something during uh, the Q&A. Thank you.